Hi, and welcome to Visibility Unlimited, the podcast and Visibility Unlimited Spotlight. This is a new addition to both of those. As you know, the Spotlight version is the video portion of Visibility Unlimited. This is my social impact spotlight. There are so many people doing amazing work out there, and it may not fall directly under business for diversity, equity, and inclusion, but it definitely falls under, you should be looking at social impact as part of and in in conjunction with your diversity, equity, inclusion offerings, foundation of your organization. And so I have special guests that I've asked to take part of this. As you know, I'm not going to say their names right away. I'll just say hello in the beginning. And then I'm gonna ask them all the same eight questions. So I welcome you. It's very hard not to say your name, but I will start out by asking you to please start your sentence with, I am, but it can't be about your job. So welcome. Thank you. I am Devin Thorpe, and I am a husband, a father, and an aspiring grandfather. Congratulations. (laughs) I hope one day to to be that. (laughs) Congratulations in advance. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. (laughs) I love that. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. My next question is what does social impact mean to you? Yeah, I've been working in this space for a little over a decade, uh, well, about a dozen years. And I initially, kind of took responsibility on a personal level for playing a role in solving all of the world's big problems. And then people kept saying to me, well, what are the world's big problems? How do you define those? And it forced me to really be more thoughtful about it. I thought everybody just knew. (laughs) And uh, and so when I said, okay, I got to write this down, what are they? I I, I identified climate and the environment as one. poverty and social justice as a second area, and global health issues as a third. And um, as I've been working in this area, I have come to appreciate too that it's important to look at the full spectrum on these efforts from small micro projects in your local community, in your own neighborhood, all the way up through global efforts, right? And and all of them are valuable. Wherever you're playing in that space, I'm I'm happy to celebrate and support and encourage uh, the work that you're doing. There isn't a wrong way, in my view, uh, to 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 try and have social impact. Mm, I agree, absolutely. So then that brings us to what exactly do you do? I appreciate that question. I, I'm excited to share. So I do two things uh, broadly. The first thing is uh, that I talk about these issues. Uh, and so I have a newsletter called Superpowers for Good that includes a podcast where you've been a guest and other amazing people like Bill Gates, almost as amazing as you. And we we talk about social impact issues. And so I share that. Uh, now I'm fortunate to be able to share that on streaming television, YouTube, and as a podcast. I'm excited about that. Um, so that's thing one. And it's really been fun. I've been doing this for over a decade. Uh, and it really brings me joy because it just gives me such an opportunity to talk to amazing people. Um Building on the network that I've begun to establish, I started organizing events and created a company for that called the Super Crowd Inc. And so we're organizing events around social impact focused investing via crowdfunding. So, you know, this investment crowdfunding is new, makes people nervous. And so we're trying to help people learn. Because under the new rules, all of us are eligible to be investors, and there are countless opportunities to invest 
sometimes less than a hundred bucks at a time. So all of us have the resources, all of us are eligible, and it's a tremendous way to have social impact, just like giving $50 to the United Way. This is a way to have social impact, but you can get the money back mm -hmm. and then some sometimes. So I'm excited about this new uh, way to have social impact. And so we're, we're, we're focusing in a little bit on this um, opportunity to support diverse founders, social entrepreneurs, community builders, et cetera. Yeah, that is amazing. I, I have noticed that you have really made an effort to include um, diversity as part of this initiative to make sure that um, the part of the conversation and then part of receiving funds. Yeah, it, it, it's vitally important. Uh, if, if we only uh, kind of do the things that the way they've always been done, we aren't going to address the problems, right? And and when you start looking at data around who gets venture capital, as a for instance, it's my favorite for instance, but something like one or 2% of venture capital goes to female-led companies mm -hmm. and, uh, and founded companies. Think about that, right? Uh, women are starting companies at, at a rate very comparable to men, so right? It's not like there aren't opportunities for us to invest in women-led businesses, but venture capitalists aren't doing it. And I first wrote about this problem a decade ago. And you know what, Leslie? It hasn't improved one iota. And 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 people who are uh, members of minority communities haven't had any improvement either. Now I do see that there are some exceptional venture capital firms that are doing things differently and better. I think of like Renew Venture Capital is one, Beta Boom is another. But these are exceptions to a rule that is really disappointing and disheartening. Uh, but it, it's exciting to see people working to help and support them. Uh, but one of the things that I love about this investment crowdfunding is that we are seeing that women do better. And in fact, by some measures, they do better than men. Uh, they tend to do a better job of hitting their goals hmm, than, than men. When, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it's I think it's twofold. Uh, I think women are smarter uh, and tend as a result, to set more realistic goals and to have better plans for ex for accomplishing them. Uh, wow. Men, uh, maybe we're just socialized to be a little more arrogant and confident. And so we uh, set higher goals and it's harder for us to achieve them because we aren't as well prepared to execute to get there. Uh, so um, women are still not getting as much as men in total. Uh, we've got to address that. But but as a percentage, they're doing way above the one or 2% level for venture capital and better even than banks, right? Banks, uh, you know, small business lenders do not lend as much to women as they do to men. And so it's a problem there too. And we're seeing in crowdfunding, this tends to be better uh, and it tends to be better for minorities as well. We've got more ground to make up uh, on minority investing, but there are some great organizations like uh, the 10K project that are working directly at uh, addressing that. And I love to support them with what I do, both at Superpowers for Good and at the Super Crowd. That is great. Thank you for that. That was a lot of great information. You heard it here, folks. Uh, women execute better. And I didn't say. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So Devin, what's your why behind the why? You gave us the why you're doing it, but what what's that deep down? Yeah, so uh, if you'll forgive me, I'll take a minute and share a story. Uh, when I was just 11 years old, um, in the summer of 1976, uh, there was a dam called the Teton Dam uh, that was newly constructed in southeastern Idaho. And as soon as it was filled to, you know, to its normal level, I wouldn't say capacity, but as soon as it filled to its normal level, it failed. And uh, it the flood that ensued uh, really devastated uh, a community called Rexburg, Idaho. 
and this is a relatively small town, but like 13,000 people or something, full-time residents. There's a university there. So the, the population doubles in the school year, but this was happened in the summer. And uh, it devast it left about 80% of the structures damaged or destroyed. And at the time, as a kid, I was living in Salt Lake City, which was just about uh, a four hour drive from there. And so uh, people from all around the West uh, organized that summer to go visit Rexburg and help people dig muck and mud out of their basements and try to you know, put the town back together. And my father came to me that summer and said, uh, you know, Devin, I'm going up to Rexburg on Saturday. Do you want to come? And I thought, you know, digging in the mud sounded like a good time. I was 11. 11, okay. <laughs> so, so I said, sure. Uh, and, you know, I remember being very excited uh, on the drive up. In fact, I, I, I remember not sleeping at all on the drive up. I was so excited. We got on buses about two o'clock in the morning so that we would arrive just at dawn. And we did. And then we got out you know, I remember eating a donut, was very excited about the donut and we got to work and, um, you know, we worked all day uh, and uh, into the evening. And then when it got dark, we got back on the buses and came home. And uh, it was really an extraordinary experience. And um, I really felt like I had changed the world and made a difference. Now, to be honest, I, I went back recently and visited Rexburg. And I looked everywhere. I could not find the statue that they had erected in my honor. I, I, <laughs> the I, nerve. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, don't you realize? <laughs> I was there for a whole day. I was, a, a whole day. Like, Ooh, I had a shovel and everything. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, yeah. because it sounds like the ally, the ally fatigue that everyone was talking about at one point. Like they did one thing. I went to a march. Aren't you excited? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so I, uh, uh, you know, I, I, you know, in hindsight, I appreciate that I did not make a difference, mm -hmm. but it was life changing to me. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had made a difference, and it felt good to make a difference. And so I vowed that I would never miss an opportunity to serve other people. Now I did. I have messed up. I'm not perfect by any means, but that experience helped define my life. And so as I grew up, I began to formulate a, a career plan that the first half of my career would be spent on making money. And I did okay with that. I'm not great at making money, but I made a little bit, squirreled a little bit away. And so I launched in, in mid-career, a second career focused on social impact. And uh, that's where we are today. I'm about, you know, like I say, about 12 years into the second career and still trying to figure out how to make it work. But I'm having a ball and making a difference. I'm convinced of that. I love that. Because then my next question is, you're here to shake up the world. How? And I think you just yeah, it's a great, great question. And and I think the the key thing is um, I, I want to encourage people to uh, use their superpowers uh, because I think we all have superpowers. And when we come together and we use our superpowers together uh, in groups uh, as a people, we really do make a difference. We can make a big big difference. It's like a busload of people coming up from Salt Lake to did muck, dig muck and mud out of basements, right? Uh, one busload of people make a big difference, even if one 11-year-old kid doesn't. Um, and then in a parallel way, I, I really want to encourage people to become investors via crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very different thing. It, it, it has similar I don't want it to say it's the same, but it has similar risks and rewards to investing in the stock market, especially in small companies, right? If you yeah. invest in a small company in the stock market, there's a chance it'll go out of business and that can happen with crowdfunding. But uh, at the same time, we're all eligible to do it. And some of the best returns that people are getting is in making private investments. So it can be lucrative, but Here's a key thing that is really important to understand about investing via crowdfunding and how it differs from investing in the stock market, like in our 401ks, right? If I put money to work in a 401k 
that money doesn't go to the companies that are trading on the stock market. It goes to the company, the people right. that sell the shares that already owned them, right? So right. it's just going to to Bob and Sally and Sam and Sue and Fidelity Investments and, and Morgan Stanley. It's not going to the company. Right. But when you invest in crowdfunding companies, right, you are investing directly in the company. You are making an impact for a social entrepreneur. And, you know, that could be a little business down the street that just is trying to borrow $50,000 from the customers. It, it could be a social entrepreneur that's got an amazing technology for solving, addressing climate change. You know, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of people with a lot of cool innovations around climate. And I just love that space. But, but we're also seeing uh, diverse founders bringing all kinds of innovative projects to, to market and you can just back any one of them. And there are dozens at any time. And so it's, there are so many cool ways to have social impact. And, and unlike you know, your donations to charity, this is money that in the long run can come back to you. Right. Um, and I, I, let me just add, one really, you know, to try to catalyze this, this shaking things up, there's a website, uh, a company called SMBX. Their website is thesmbx.com. And they just help, they call it the Small Business Bond Exchange, which is a very fancy way of saying they help companies do crowdfunding and borrow money. But the key thing is they will let you invest as little as $10. So wow. you can go, you can do your first investment for 10 bucks <laughs> and see how this works. And it's amazing. And right. And what it's what is going to happen, right? Uh, because it's just loans, it's a pretty simple thing. You put in 10 bucks, and in about 60 days, you'll get your first payment. And right. it'll be like six or eight cents or something. It's going to be small <laughs> if you put in ten dollars, but you're gonna well, start getting payments. <laughs> you're gonna start getting payments on your ten dollar investment. And and it's a great way to sort of say, okay, I just want to test the water. I just right. want to see if right. this works, right? And you can, and it does. Anyway, I'm sorry, I I could go on forever, but but it's a great way to start. It's it's the great introduction to crowdfund investing is to go do something at the smbx.com. That is great because I was going to say, what do you want the world to know? So give that website one more time so they're really clear on where they can go. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that is the key thing. Crowdfunding works and you can, you know, you can try it at thesmbx.com. The S-M-B-X. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it's it's a great little way to start your right. crowdfund investment journey. And okay. there are so many opportunities beyond that, but that's a great little way to say, okay, I'm going to take 10 bucks that's, and test it. A little test. So, yeah. Yeah. okay, your social impact focus is... Yeah, so I, I alluded to this already, but but I really am looking at this climate and environment as one, uh, poverty and social justice as two, and global health as the third. And again, trying to kind of bridge this from the small micro community neighborhood level, all the way up to the global. Wonderful. And you know, one of my favorite examples of of how that works is polio. Uh, now, a lot of people think polio has been eradicated completely from the earth, but it hasn't. There hasn't been a case in the United States in decades, right? Uh, just uh, before I was born, the vaccine was developed and it's been in use ever since. Uh, and so people my age and younger are, it's very rare to find anyone with polio uh, who's younger than I am. Um, there are a few, there are a few, but about 1980, since I think 1980, there hasn't been a case in, in the United States. But uh, in the mid 1980s, there were still hundreds of thousands of cases around the world and there are still hundreds now. So it's down about 99% from where it was. And it's an amazing global effort. Rotary International kind of leads that. And, and so this is a great example of how the micro and the macro global come together because we've got Rotarians working in every little community in the affected countries now, especially Pakistan and Afghanistan. And it pops up from time to time in African countries. And then, 
you know, the Rotarians especially, but helped by, uh, you know, the UNICEF and yeah. the UN more broadly, and the Gates Foundation is pouring grundles of money into this, but they, they, they'll they swoop in, but it's, but there's this grassroots rotary led vaccination effort that's just amazing you know it's rotary rotary volunteers oftentimes that are going door to door hosting yes. these inoculation things sometimes they're they're paying uh women uh, like I, when i visited pakistan to look at this uh, uh the un uh, and the gates foundation were helping to fund women going door to door around the country uh to deliver uh, polio vaccines and keep track of every child in the entire country to make sure they were getting proper doses. And it, it, it's an amazing global effort, but it starts with one woman knocking on one door in Pakistan. And I think that's why people should care about social impact because it affects all of us at some point, whether it's yeah. heart or it's health. I mean, if COVID has taught us nothing, it is the fact that we must look locally and globally in order to, I mean, not to remove something, but to enhance, to grow, to better it, to solve it, to keep finding new solutions for it, to keep experimenting. And I think that's what social impact does, regardless of the field. And I think that is why, um, as you stated so eloquently throughout, people should care. Uh, big or small, there's something for everyone to hang yeah. their hat on and a way for them to hang their hat on and dip their toe in. So that's exact, exactly right. Exactly right. Devin, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, there are lots of ways. Uh, I'm easy to find on social media, but let me invite you to start by just feeling free to send me an email. I'm Devin at the supercrowd.com. Devin at the supercrowd.com. But uh, I'm on. Uh, what used to be called Twitter um, at the super crowd. Uh, and you can find me on uh, LinkedIn. That's a great way to track me down. Uh, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Devin Thorpe. Uh, easy to find me there, but uh, also on Facebook. And now I'm on threads. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's too many. Know, <laughs> like keep yeah, and I, I'm on Instagram and yeah. I'm not on TikTok. Don't look for me there. I'm not there either. Uh, Don't worry. <laughs> Devin, thank you so much. For, for those that it's too much, just make sure you take a moment or two to listen to the podcast that, that Devin is doing that's soon to be a TV show. I think if you are still unsure of the type of people he speaks to and who's investing, I think that'll give you a great opportunity to, to learn even more about uh, what this crowdsourcing can do for social impact and what Devin is doing. Um, and look at his background. He's being very modest here. Devin is, is so unbelievably accomplished and so unbelievably smart. I was so honored to be with him on our social impact trip to Israel and to hear his thoughts and the way that he shared them and his perspective. So Devin, I just want to say thank you again for joining me here. Oh, thank you. What a privilege. What an honor. You're an extraordinary human being. And I am so grateful that you would reach out to invite me to be on your show. Um, I, I look up to you. You were you in so many ways a guide to me in Israel, in so many ways helping me survive that trip. So thank you so much. Not at all. For all my listeners and all my watchers, thank you as always. I'm Leslie Short, your host and the owner of the Cover Group. You know you can always find us at the Cover Group on all social media and on our YouTube channel. I look forward to speaking with you and sharing with you again. And never forget to expand beyond your current culture. Thanks.